In this video, I want to go through a couple of examples of writing these in the form of 5 to the power of k. So for the first one, we've got 125 over the cube root of 25 times by root 5. So 125 is 5 cubed. 25 is, of course, 5 squared. So we've got 5 squared to the power of 1 third. And we're multiplying that by the square root of 5, so 5 to the power of a half. So we can write that as 5 cubed over 5 to the power of 2 thirds, 2 times a third, and then we've got times by 5 to the power of a half. Now, here we've got uh, 5 cubed divided by 5 to the 2 thirds, so 3 take away 2 thirds is 7 thirds, so 5 to the 7 thirds times by 5 to the half. And then we can add the indices, so 7 thirds plus a half is 17 sixths. OK, now let's take a look at number 2. Now, number 2, we have square root of fifth, uh, cube root of 50, sorry, over the square root of 625 times by the cube root of 12.5. Now, 50 can't be written as 5 to the power of something. Um, where k is going to be a fraction. I mean, I, I could using um, logarithms, but I'm not going there yet. Okay, so really I don't want to go down that route. So let's just for the moment think, okay, well, I can't write it as 5 to the power of k, and I can't write 12.5 as 5 to the power of k either. So what can I do? Well, one thing that you can do is the fact that you've got the cube root of something times the cube root of something else. So if I write the cube root of p, and I want to multiply that by the cube root of q, then that is the same as the cube root of p times q. OK, so that is a perfectly valid thing to utilise here. So I could go about it this way. Um, I will show you another way in a moment as well, but I'll go through that way first. So actually what I can do is I can combine those two terms together. And 50 times by 12.5 is 625. So we've actually got the cube root of 625 over the square root of 625. Now 625 is 5 to the power of 4. So we've got 5 to the power of 4 to the power of a third over 5 to the power of 4 to the power of a half. So we have 5 to the power of 4 thirds over 5 to the power of 2. So 4 thirds take away 2 is minus 2 thirds. So 5 to the power of minus 2 thirds is our answer. Now, there is an alternative method to doing this, um, and it's a little bit more long-winded than doing it that way, but you might appreciate where things are coming from um, in seeing this way as well. Now, 50, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about it as um, 5 to the power of something times another number. So I know that 50 is 25 times 2, so 5 squared times 2. So I could write this as the cube root of 2 times 5 squared. And of course, the 625 is 5 to the power of 4. So 5 to the power of 4 uh, to the power of a half. And then the 12.5, well, 12.5 is 25 over 2. So that's 5 squared over 2. And it's cube rooted, so to the power of a third. In fact, I'll get rid of the cube root there, and I'll write that as the power of third as well. So what you might be able to see here is that when I uh, expand that bracket out, I'm going to have 2 to the power of 1 third times by 5 to the power of 2 thirds over 5 to the power of 2 times by, now this, 
is 5 to the power of 2 thirds over 2 to the power of a third. Now, because we've got 2 to the power of 3rd divided by 2 to the power of 3rd, that'll be 1. So that's gone. We've got 5 to the power of 2 thirds times 5 to the power of 2 thirds, so 5 to the power of 4 thirds over 5 squared. And then we've got, what do we get? Minus 2 thirds, so 5 to the power of minus 2 thirds is my answer. OK, so that's a slightly alternative way of doing it. Uh, it's perfectly fine. Um, it's quite nice to see, uh, see bringing out the other factors and seeing them cancel away.